Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at a method for creating an, an ocean wave simulation in Kangaroo for Grasshopper. Um, now I should note this is not going to be a strictly mathematical based approach like you would see in a actual wave simulation for a computer graphics program, um, but this is going to be a, a more sort of uh, sort of aesthetic approach for creating um, a decent look for waves. So uh, here's what it would look like. Something like this. Alright, cool. So I'm going to get rid of that and we're going to dive into a new document and get started. So we're going to start off with our kangaroo physics solver and we need some geometry for that. So what I'm going to be using is a mesh plane. Uh, the mesh plane asks for a base rectangle, so I'm also going to grab a rectangle and throw that down. And I'm going to plug in some, some values for my X and Y size. In fact, I'll just use one slider so we can keep it a nice uh, square. So I'll plug that into my X and Y, bump that up a little. Um, yeah, somewhere around there will do it for me. Um, and then I'm going to change this slider type to integers so that we can plug it into our width and height over here. And we're going to keep it at about 20, well, yeah, 24 will be fine. Um, 24 divisions in the X and Y direction. We can't go too high with uh, processing a simulation like this, just because uh, kangaroo will not, uh, kangaroo is going to give us live feedback, so we don't want to keep this, we don't want this to be set too high. Um, we will be able to set it higher when we finalize the simulation, but for testing I'm going to keep it nice and low. So I'm going to chuck my mesh here into my geometry input here, and I'm going to plug in my timer, and I'm going to set it the interval to 20 milliseconds, and I'm going to grab a button for my simulation reset. Oops. Now, okay, so we're going to get started with creating our four subjects. Our first one is going to be our springs. Um, we always need springs for any kangaroo simulation. Well, for most kangaroo simulations, there's few exceptions to this rule. Um, we're also going to need our mesh edges, which is going to be this here. And that makes our connection and then we need a rest length. So we're going to grab the curve length of all of these edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my four subjects. Reset simulation and we're good. Um, I'm also going to pull out a mesh preview on this side so that we can turn off all this extra geometry in here and I'm also going to disable my preview here. Oh, not disable, I'm going to turn off the preview. Um, now I'm going to deconstruct this mesh over here, and we're going to apply gravity. Oh no, no we're not yet, that comes later. We're going to do a wind simulation, and actually the wind simulation asks for three points. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> pardon me, um, is I'm going to triangulate this mesh plane over here and then I'm going to deconstruct that mesh and let me just move all of this over so I've deconstructed my mesh that's completely triangular and it's okay so now I need to grab my individual vertices that are going to be my point one, two, and 3 for this wind simulation so in order to do that uh, you can see that this face output here is just a face type so it tells us that we're working with a triangle and it gives us the index of the vertices which correspond to that face <coughs> sorry so what we need is to pull out or we need to deconstruct that face and as soon as we deconstruct it it gives us each of those index numbers and so next we need two uh, use a list item. And so this list item is going to pull out vertices uh, for this index. So I'll make three copies of it. 
and I'm going to plug in whoops, A, B, and C, and then I'm going to plug that into my point 1, point 2, and point 3. Alright, and now the other thing we need for our wind simulation is a wind direction defined by this wind vector over here. So I'm going to grab a multi-dimensional slider and I'm going to edit it so that my bounds are from negative 1 to 1 in both directions. This is going to allow me to create wind direction in both negative and positive direction. Cool. So then what I'm also going to do is apply a vector amplitude. Um, let's see, AMP, there we go, there's my amplitude. And I'm going to create another slider for that amplitude, give it a maximum value of 20, and plug it into my wind. Alright, so now we can plug this in and we can see whether it's working. Whoops, let me. I wanted to add that, not replace my springs as well. So now when I reset the simulation, uh, let's see, nothing happens. What is our error? Ah, oh, right, we have to flatten our four subjects over here. There we go. Okay, and so you're still going to notice that nothing is happening. And that's all well and good, and basically the reason for that is that our wind is blowing in a completely horizontal direction. So Kangaroo thinks that if you blow, if you were to blow wind flat across the surface, um, it will not create any sort of disruption across that. And the way we can just test that our wind is actually working is by deconstructing this vector over here. And actually, no, I don't even need to do that. I can just do an addition. And to that vector, I'm going to add a bit of Z. Uh, I'm going to add some Z direction. And then when I plug that in, you can see my, uh, my mesh now takes off. And if I were to reapply this wind vector, uh, once again, it's going to stop. Let me just give it some amplitude. But now, there we go. Uh, we've now applied wind to this mesh. Alright, cool. So we know that it's working. Um, but once again, if we were to start off with just this completely flat value, it's uh, it's not going to do anything. Alright, cool. So I'm happy with that at the moment. The, uh, the next thing I need to do is you can see that my my mesh moves from its original position, which I do not want. I want the boundaries to stay fixed. However, I do not want, I want these boundaries to stay fixed in the x and y direction, but I want their z, pl or their z component to be free to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this naked vertices component. This is a kangaroo specific component. And on each of these naked points, I'm going to create a line. Um, in fact, a line start direction and length. So my start point, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to make a move. And so I'm going to move these points by a Z vector. And that Z vector is going to be based on this slider. And this slider is going to have a maximum value of 10 for the moment. And uh, I also need an expression. My expression is going to be negative x over 2. And so when I plug that in here and here, and then I also plug this, okay, so then let me connect all this up. So we've moved these points downwards. Those are now our start points. Our direction is our z vector and our length is this over here. So basically, it moves the point... Um, oh, actually, that's a negative z vector. Let me just grab a normal z. Um, so it moves the point half of the distance and then creates a line at twice that length so that, it's, so that we have some sort of positive and negative space for our point to move. 
so now I'll turn all this off. And so now what we're going to use is a curve pull. Uh, let me see if this is the kangaroo. Oops. Let me just go to kangaroo forces and find our curve pull. So our curve is going to be this line over here and our points are going to come from these naked points over here. And I'm going to graph these two inputs. And then I'm going to plug this into my force object as well. And we're going to reset the simulation. I'm also going to increase this height a little bit. So now what we should have is a mesh which has the borders fixed to a Z direction and the interior, fa interior faces slash vertices of the mesh completely free to move. So now if I were to reconnect this wind vector with some uh, Z input and re-enable the simulation, we should start to see a result. Yes, we are indeed. So we can see that our, uh, our, ver uh, our sort of edge vertices are doing their best to maintain that relationship to the uh, boundary curves. Of course, the more our mesh is in tension, the, um, or the more force applied to this mesh, the harder they're going to find it to stick to this boundary. But that said, they're not going to completely fly away. And when we are, when we do have wave movement across these, they'll be oscillating back and forth, and they'll be holding a lot better. We could, if we wanted, increase the strength over here because a hundred is pretty low. We'll see what a thousand does. Yeah, you can see that pulls it a bit closer, but like I said, we won't worry about this too much for now. Alright, so now we need to look at creating our wave movement. Um, let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything that I can, well, everything related to the running of kangaroo, just a bit further away so I've got a bit of space to work. Um, this can also move over, same as this. Alright, so now I'm going to move this all over. And now we're going to work on the rest of the simulation. So I'm just going to pause this and reset it. And uh, let's see, so now the next thing we want to do is, okay, we are actually going to use sine waves to sort of give this mesh uh, some wave movement, and we'll see how we can incorporate that so that it uh, we're still inc including these other forces. So what we're going to do is we're going to deconstruct this mesh, and we get a collection of vertices. So if you've watched my um, my tutorial for sine waves, we're now going to use a method to create um, sort of wave disturbance across this. And the way we're going to do that is with a sort of a point attractor. So I'll just create a basic one for now and this is going to be an evaluate surface. And this surface is going to be based off this rectangle that we created. And I'm going to reparameterize this surface and I'm going to grab a multi-dimensional slider. Oops, don't want to bake that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the distance between these two points. So point A and point B. Um, and then we're going to be running this through a sine function. So I'm going to grab an expression here. At the moment it's just going to be a basic amplitude times sine of x. Actually, oh yeah, that'll be fine for now. Um, we also need an amplitude. And we'll get rid of my y. Actually, no, I'm going to be using y later on, so we won't worry about that. Um, and now I need an amplitude. We'll give this a maximum value of 10. And 
And so now what we get is a height value. Um, we could just see how that's working. I'll just show you very quickly if I were to move all of these vertices based on this Z amplitude. There we go. So we're getting a pretty messy sort of result. So what I might want to do is I might want to hone these distance values back in a little bit with a slider. There we go. So we, you can now you can now see that we're getting a much more defined wave in there, <coughs> which is what we want. And now we're also going to okay. So before we move on, we need to create a way to animate this wave. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a counter. And so this counter is just going to count off values once we tell it it can. So I'll just plug this button in here. And I'm going to drag, actually now for now I'll just make a copy. All right. I'm going to grab another timer. And we'll plug that in there. Set my interval to 20 milliseconds. And you can see it is now counting off. Alright, and so now that we've got that, um, we're going to use an expression over here. And this expression is going to be the modulus of, uh, we're going to x modulo y using the percentage sign. Oops, let me get rid of that one there. x modulo y divided by y. And so, what this is going to allow us to do is, let's say we set this value to 100. If I were to, okay, let me just, firstly just do x modulo y. So this is basically going to give us our remainder of um, x over y. And then as soon as we do x modulo y over y, it's going to ensure that that value remains between 0 and 1, which is all well and good. Okay, so now the um, this is going to be multiplied by 2 times pi times uh, the equation that we just created, and and here I'm going to go sine of x plus y. And so this is going to animate my wave motion. Alright, so now we can use this data here. In fact, we're not going to um, we're not going to be moving this, these points. Instead, these points are going to correspond to a unary force. So on each of these points from my mesh, I'm going to be applying this z-directional force. And I can get rid of those points. And so now we can add this <coughs> back into our simulation. And reset it. And let's see what we've got. Um, let me just preview off where okay. Um, I've still got my surface on. Alright, so it looks like our wind vector, we probably want to remove that z direction from our wind vector. Okay, so we're getting a tiny bit of wave movement. Um, it might help if our, our sort of wave period was a bit lower. Okay, so now we're starting to get some motion. Um, let me also turn off this deconstruct mesh. It's, uh, it's still looking pretty limited. Um, I might want to speed this up a little bit just by lowering this number here. Okay, so we're starting to get a bit more animation to it. Um, 
at this point. Okay, so that's that's the basics of it. Okay, now we're gonna try and make this a little more robust. Um, at the moment, my waves are all sourcing from this sort of origin, so I'm gonna try and uh, mix that up a little bit. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start by constructing a point. And this point is going to be at the direct center of this mesh. And so I'm going to take an expression which is going to be x over 2. And that's going to be my x and y value. And then we're also we're also going to plug in a z value just for my height. And now I'm going to create a circle. And it's going to be on this plane, and it's going to have some radius. In fact, the radius is going to be a factor of this first slider here. So I'm going to create a nice large circle. And what I'm also going to create is another smaller circle, which is going to multiply this input once more. And it's, okay. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie another expression in here. So this expression is just going to be my 2 times pi times x means that I can pull my 2 pi x out of here, or just 2 pi, and then plug that in there. And this is going to go into here, and what we want to do is we want to evaluate this curve. Um, I think this is, yes, this is my small curve, and I want to evaluate it between 0 and 1. Okay, so you can see that this is giving me really, really choppy movement. Um, so what we can do, oh, actually, firstly, I do need to reparameterize this here. Okay, so you can see that it's very, very choppy. Um, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a smooth numbers component. This is quite a neat little component for simulations. What it basically does is just... Um, it looks at changing numbers and tries to average them out a bit better just so that you get a bit more fluid movement so this um, this point here is going to be the basis of this larger circle and I'm just going to lower the radius on this inner circle here okay and now we're going to do a similar thing in order to evaluate this curve. Um, but what I'm going to do is I am going to, let's see, I'm going to grab a graph mapper and we're going to look at a really cool animation method. So what I can do is I can change the, I'm going to change this to a Bezier curve and so you can see my, um, my value is just moving along here so if I were to plug this in on this curve, it's going to give me a sort of a constant velocity around there. But if I were to change this graph up a little bit, you can see that it's going to speed up as at the beginning and then it's going to slow down. Um, it is just still giving me a little bit of chop around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match my uh, start and end tangents so that that, um, that feels a teeny bit more natural. I could just pull this down ever so slightly, and you know what, that's, that's good for me. Um, what I'm also going to do, actually, let's just, uh, let's feed this point back into our simulation now. So instead of using the evaluate surface, I'm going to move all of this along. Okay, we're going to plug this point in here. And so now that we've got this moving point, 
Um, we're going to get a slightly more dynamic simulation. I'm also going to increase my amplitude for this unary force. Let's try boost it up to 50. Alright, um, looks like we've still got something previewed that's just getting in the way for me. Maybe the, these edges. Alright, um, I'm also going to take down the, uh, what do we call it, the, the uh, frequency of these waves a little bit. And, okay. One more thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a few more values in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a range. I'm going to plug in the slider here. Uh, let's go a maximum of five. Plug this in. Set it to two for now. And we're just going to, let's see, what we want to do is, let's see, um, we need to add this into here. So let me just reset this number. And let me see what I can do. Um, we probably need to multiply our ranges by this here. And then, oops, we're also going to cull out our last number because it's going to be giving us the exact same value as our first number. So I'll plug that in there. And we're going to add this in. So actually, let me just create an expression which is going to be x times y plus z. So we're multiplying x times y and we're adding z. Alright, let's see how that works when I plug that in to my x. Okay, cool. So now it's giving me two points that are going around this circle. Um, I could, if I wanted, add more points in there. I'm just going to spread them out quite nicely along there according to my um, Bezier animation curve. Now let me just tidy this up a little bit because we've got a lot going on. Alright, so now what we need to do is... Okay, at the moment the, the multiple points are not piping into this simulation properly. So what we're going to need to do, I'll just quickly lock my solver. I'm going to start by grafting the points over here. So then that's going to feed in here to my distance. Um, let's see how that's working, actually. <clears throat> um, it looks like this curve evaluate is going to be doing the wrong thing here. We only want one curve coming out. So I'm going to list item out here and plug that into my parameter here. Alright, that's a bit better for me. Now let's see what we've got coming in here. So we should have, yep, two values. Okay, and so then on this side, what I need to do is I need to flip the matrix and then I need to use an average component and plug that into my Z. Whoops, before I do that, I'm going to need to flatten this. All right, there we go. So all we're trying to do by doing this is sort of just add a little more unpredictability to the mesh by giving it a few more wave sources because real ocean waves are sort of the uh, their their waves are coming from absolutely everywhere, sort of combining and cancelling each other out. 
So the more um, the more sources that we have piping in, the better our simulation is going to look. But at the same time, we can't go too high. Um, all right, so I think we're basically done with the simulation now. Um, I'm going to now ramp it up so that we can see how it behaves once we've got more variables in here. Try 42. And I'll reset the simulation. And uh, there we go. There is our wave simulation almost done. Let me just tweak a few more things. Might tweak this uh, frequency again. There we go. Getting some real nice fluid movement through here, but you can see it's really slowed down now that I've bumped this up to 42. We could try um, adding three steps in here so that we're getting three numbers moving around that circle. That's probably really going to slow it down, but it is going to give us a nice result. Um, and in fact, seeing as we've done that, we might need to now go back and tweak this uh, frequency again, bump it up a little bit, and there we go, getting some really cool wave motion with this. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on creating a uh, simple ocean wave. Uh, that's all from me.